Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and that might have been the easiest thing I've ever built on this channel and that's because what we're doing today is torque testing. So when I did the DF Robot Motors test a few weeks back, I tried to torque test by pushing the robots up against the scale and that didn't go particularly well. So today what we're going to do instead is we are going to have the robots attempt to drag this uh, piece of actually an old flywheel uh, dodgeball thrower and we're going to have them try to drag this across the ground and have a force gauge attached. But to make things a little bit harder I have uh, two litres of water, something like half a gallon I think in American magic, on top of all of that to make it harder to drag across the ground so hopefully we get an accurate representation on the force gauge of how much force it actually takes or like these motors can give out. So here we have our little bucket, it was originally the flywheel housing for a dodgeball thrower but that is a long past uh, use for this thing now and on the front I have mounted a load cell uh, which these things are exactly the same things that you'll find in many of the little kitchen scales around the place. Basically, they bend and flex at just a, like the right points and the right amounts to allow an amplifier to tell a microcontroller how much they've bent and flexed, which you can then, with a calibration, give an actual amount of grams reading to distribute that force. So the front of this thing, we've got, we've got a little hook section which bolts onto the front here and will trap a string. And then I am currently printing pieces that glue onto the back of these test chassis so that we'll have a hook on here as well. So we'll sit them like this with the load cell here, the robots out here and a piece of string between the two and have the robot try and run away. And as before, we'll have weight on the back of this thing to try and stop it from moving. If this is not enough weight, I can stack more weight on here. That is no problem. So that was honestly quite interesting and the data that I got out of this is different from the data that I got with the robots bumping up against the scale. So we've got the 75 to ones here, the 50 to ones and the 30 to ones. Now the 75 to ones actually did pretty decently. A maximum pull of about 100 grams, 102-ish grams and then a decent average in the 80s somewhere and I'll put those up on screen. The interesting thing is that both of the other two had a higher maximum output. The 50 to 1s had a maximum output of 120 grams and the 30 to 1s had a maximum output of 140 grams. Now looking at the actual data and how this happened, I think this is because of the bouncing and the way that these are actually pulling on the scale or on the load cell. And that is when the robot is moving, we're actually not getting full torque out of the motors. We're actually, because we're bouncing along, we're kind of like just jumping and skidding on the table. So what we're, where we're actually getting the torque is by the wheel brushing against the table and doing that quickly and kind of pushing backwards a little bit on the table. So we're kind of getting instantaneous, like quick burst torque, uh, which is the same thing that happens when 
you're doing stuff like trying to drive across sand, what you're actually doing is you're throwing sand backwards to gain your torque going forwards or your uh, force going forwards. So the faster you can do that, the more torque you have across the ground. And I think that's kind of the thing that is going on here. Maybe, I'm not really 100% sure on that. Uh, but that is how I think our maximum is uh, worse on our slow motors that are supposed to have more torque. I think it's because basically the chassis is just not heavy enough. So before we close this whole thing out, the one final thing I want to try and do is to do a test with extra weight on our 50 to ones. We're actually gonna throw a decent chunk of weight up on our 50 to one, almost double the weight of this whole setup and just see if this actually gives us more torque. Bearing in mind, of course, that the motors will have to be pushing all of this extra weight as well. So if they do push this extra weight, that is going to be uh, showing that they have even more torque than they were able to pull off the load cell. Because of course, uh, weight at the top here, this is 100 grams on its own, and this is an extra 130, I believe. I will weigh that and put those numbers on the screen. And yeah, so if this can even drive like this, then it's obviously got more torque than what it was actually showing on that scale. So honestly, that was a perfect test. Carrying this extra 216 grams, the robot then pulled extra force on the load cell because it was skipping and jumping around a whole lot less. So its new maximum is now 250 grams, and then its new average is about 200 grams, and its new minimum is 100 grams, which is basically the same as these guys maximum without any extra weight. So realistically, what I'm trying to say here is that these N20s have way more torque than what we actually need for these combat robots. And the fact that we are breaking traction on these constantly means that we are not getting the maximum torque out of these. So I think to follow up and kind of finish off the recommendation that I made, go for speed because you don't need the crazy, crazy, crazy amount of torque that you can get out of these. And realistically, because we're breaking traction so often on these, your wheel choice is more likely to dictate your pushing force than the actual motors that you're using, whether they be 30 to ones, 50 to ones, or 75 to ones. So speed is the most important element of the actual discussion of choice around motors here. And I think mostly that will come down to a personal preference thing. 50 to one is what most people seem to run at the ARC league that I am constantly fighting at. Uh, 30 to ones are for those people who want to be a little bit faster in that particular category. And 75 to one I normally see with beginners and new people uh, running robots for the first time, but they do get quite quickly outpaced by 50 to ones. So it is a little bit of a trade off there in terms of controllability versus uh, not being completely beaten to the punch by your opponent. I have the torque tester set up now. So in the future, I might sit down and actually do a video looking at wheels and wheel types and uh, looking at the torque produced by certain wheel types. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like me to try and test out with that torque tester, uh, let me know in the comments down below and we might even do a video on that in the future as well. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed that and I will see you in the next one.